Hi guys, my name is Hayden and I am a sports dietitian nutritionist and I'm sharing some tips on what to eat during your ski tour. What and how much to eat and drink during a ski tour depends on so many factors. Duration and intensity of exercise, the terrain you're on, the temperature, humidity, and your individual sweat rate. All of these things influence what your needs are. Eating carb-rich foods during exercise is recommended to maintain carbohydrate availability, which is the primary fuel source during exercise. For touring up to two and a half hours, it's recommended to have 30 to 45 grams of carb per hour. This can be achieved by sports drink alone or a mixture of sports drink and real food. For touring longer than two and a half hours, it's recommended to have about 40 to 70 grams of carb per hour, and in some cases, even upwards of 90 grams of carb per hour. When exercising hard, it's best to trickle in foods over a longer period of time rather than eating larger portions at once like we do when we eat a meal so that we can keep enough blood flow to our working muscles rather than helping to digest the food. However, if intensity and effort is low, taking a lunch break to eat a meal is probably just fine, especially for those who don't have a sensitive stomach during exercise. Let's look at how these numbers translate to real foods. Sport-specific foods, whole foods, and liquid calories can all be used. This half a cup of salted roasted potatoes is about 13 grams of carb, 15 pretzels is about 23 grams of carb, and a package of sports chews is gonna range anywhere from 25 to 40 grams. A waffle, your typical thin waffle is usually around 15 grams. This one is probably more, just based on how thick it is. And this smoothie is about 20 grams of carb. And then a Stroop waffle is roughly 15. A combination of all of these foods can work for your ski tour. A sugar or honey sweetened coffee or tea can also provide additional carbohydrates. And what all of these options have in common is that they're low in fiber. Fiber can delay digestion and cause an upset stomach. And because it delays digestion, it can also prevent the sugar from hitting your bloodstream as quickly as you want it to. Aiming for salty snacks is important for replacing the sodium that you lose in sweat, which is super important for fluid balance. Keep these snacks in your jacket pocket to keep them accessible and from keeping them from getting too cold. Now let's talk fluids. Dehydration can not only impair performance, but it can delay recovery and increase your risk of injury. And thirst response is actually suppressed in the cold weather, even though you can still sweat tremendously. As little as 2% body weight loss during exercise can impair performance. Average sweat rates are around half to two liters per hour. So aim to sip fluids every five to 15 minutes to prevent dehydration. This might be a controversial recommendation, but keeping a bladder in your pack can encourage drinking. The likelihood of the tube freezing depends on a couple factors. You need to continue to drink to pull the warm fluid from the bladder through the tube. But if it's really well below freezing, then it might not be a good option, in which case keeping a soft flask in your jacket pocket can be a great option to encourage hydration. A hot thermos of coffee, tea, broth, hot apple cider, hot chocolate, even warmed sports beverage are also really great options that are probably more palatable in cold weather. However, you have to be diligent about pulling your thermos out of your pack to drink from it. Don't let inadequate fueling and dehydration be the reasons you tire out early.